Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be going over what hardware and computer setups are best for running War Thunder effectively. Thankfully, I've been able to play War Thunder on about half a dozen computers over the years, with five of those setups being represented in this video. These are wildly different computers that run on a huge range of specifications and prices, so you should be able to get a good idea of if your computer is capable of running War Thunder or not, and on what graphic settings. That said, as always, subscriptions are huge for my channel, so if you'd like, please hit that subscribe button. Either way, let's get into it. So to start, I did what I could to standardize the testing in this video. For example, for my three current computers I have access to, I ran the same test drive with the same vehicles, being the XM1 and the BF109Z, and also ran the same tank battle benchmark at the end. Unfortunately, though I do have my recordings from my old computer saves, those computers were destroyed in a fire, so I could not subject them to the same standardized test. You will, however, be able to still see their frames per second and approximate graphics settings in-game, along with their listed specs, as I know their specs very well. Additionally, each computer used OBS to record at 1080p and at 60 frames per second. The only exception is that my new computer records at 60 frames per second, and at 2K, with War Thunder also running in 2K, whereas every other example shows War Thunder running in 1080p. Additionally, I researched graphics card comparisons on userbenchmark.com, with each of those comparisons linked below, so check it out if you'd like. That said, let's start off with the most budget-oriented computer, the Asus Q4071 laptop. This has a 14-inch screen and runs at 60 hertz, as an NVIDIA MX350 graphics card, which is about half as fast as a GTX 1650 Laptop Edition graphics card. GPUs with comparable performance are the AMD R9 M290 and the GTX 760 Desktop Edition. This computer also has an AMD Ryzen 5 4500U processor and it features 8 gigs of RAM with DDR4 at 2933 megahertz. This said, as you can see in this gameplay and the test drives I have running, it is not all too good, and the reason being is because even though this can play graphics, play the game at relatively low-ish settings, they're not pretty at all, it will still typically run fairly smoothly. The problem that I had was in recording, so it actually records at substantially fewer frames per second than it plays, so if you are just looking to play this game with something comparable to an MX350, again, you can get an M290, GTX 760, whatever the case may be, comparable graphics cards again you can check them up on the website below it is not going to necessarily mess with your graphics but rather if you're looking to stream or if you want to become a youtuber this is not going to be sufficient to do it for the most part especially if you're looking to record in 1080p and in obs and in my experience obs is a very not resource intensive recording software so OBS is excellent to do it, and this computer just could not cut the cake. And now for the second computer on this list, it is also a laptop. It's an HP Pavilion with a 16.1 inch screen that has 144 Hz, features an i5-10500H processor, and an NVIDIA GTX 1660Ti mobile graphics card. Now the 1660Ti runs around 55% faster than the GTX 1650Ti for comparison, so expect lower frames per second and or lesser graphics with the 1650 Ti compared to this card. And again, the 1650 Ti and the 1660, very, very popular. They are typically with low to mid-range laptops, gaming laptops, and are excellent. You can play War Thunder in pretty decent graphics with these cards. Now, the GPUs for comparison are the AMD R9 Fury and the GTX 1660 for laptop. Those are probably some of the most comparable GPUs with the 1660G Ti Mobile. This also features 8GB of RAM with DDR4 at 2933 MHz. Now, recording in OBS is much, much better in this. You're not going to get the prettiest picture in the world, of course, but it is substantially better with a 1660 Ti than it is an MX350. It is very possible, and though you won't get the greatest graphics or the greatest frames per second with this, you will be able to record without too many issues. In fact, actually, my A10 Warthog review that has a ton of views has was recorded with this laptop. So the 1660 Ti is perfectly capable of streaming and recording. So if you're into War Thunder, into streaming, and also maybe you want to become a YouTuber, this is not a bad way to get going. Next up, we have my old computer. Now, this computer was a custom-built computer that I built in the summer of 2012. So pretty much all the components, with the exception of the graphics card and maybe a fan and a hard drive, were all original from when I initially built it. 
Now this computer had an i5-3570K processor that is an Intel very, very old. It also had a GTX 970 by the time I was done using it. Now this is about 30% slower than the 1660 Ti Mobile, which means that while you'll still be getting better frames per second than with the 1650 Ti Mobile, it won't be up to snuff compared to its higher power brother. So the 970, I remember this very clearly. It was pretty decent, but I think I was running into bottlenecks with the CPU. Typically, you're not going to be running into bottlenecks with the CPU, but if you have an older CPU or a much lesser powered CPU compared to the graphics card, you might eventually do that, and I'm pretty sure that's what was happening with me. Now, if you're in the market for whatever reason for a GPU that's about as powerful as the 970, you can look at GPUs with comparable performance as the AMD R9 390 or the GTX 1060 for the desktop. Now, this computer also had 16 gigabytes of RAM, but it was only DDR3 at 1600 megahertz. So while I future proofed it back then, it wasn't all too good looking back at it. But again, I mean, this is 10 years ago at this point, and I was using that computer for nearly eight years. That's where I got my YouTube career started and it served me well. So that being said, you can definitely record with a uh, GPU that's of similar power compared to a GTX 970, but it won't be all too pretty. You might only be able to get medium graphics. That's about where I was with that computer, and I was only getting between 55 and 60, maybe 70 frames per second at best. Of course, ground battles are going to be a little bit more frame rate intensive than air battles because all you really have to render is the sky in air battles, whereas ground battles is much, e or much more difficult because you have to render trees, other tanks, a lot of other things in close proximity. Air battles, much, much easier. But again, the 970 is probably, or similar GPUs, that's probably where I would draw the line as the minimum, give or take, or rather the 1650, give or take, for playing War Thunder somewhat comfortably. And now for my second most recent computer, this one was destroyed in the fire, but I still have plenty of video in regards to it. This was the Alienware, and it was either an R10 or an R11. Featured an i7-10700F processor with an RTX 2700 GPU. Now this GPU is about 109% faster than the RTX 970, which is unsurprising considering that's several generations newer. Now GPUs with comparable performance to the RTX 2700, which is still a very, very good graphics card, will be the AMD RX 6800 and the RTX 2060 Super. This computer also had 16 gigabytes of RAM that are DDR4 and at 3200 megahertz. So this was a very capable computer. Playing at 1080p, I was expecting somewhere between around 90 and around 130 frames per second on high to ultra settings. So it was right in the middle between high and ultra settings. Unfortunately, like I said, I do not have the picture of my settings because the computer is not existing any longer. However, it was somewhere right in between high and ultra. So you could get really, really good quality. It recorded very well. It was just an excellent computer for doing all of that. Now, one of the only issues I had with it was that it did not render videos all too quickly for whatever reason, whereas I can get a video to render very quickly with my current computer, maybe around 10 minutes for like a 12 gigabyte video. That same video might take 30, 40, 50 minutes with my previous computer, my Alienware. Now, I'm not really sure what the reasoning is behind that, being that my, process my processor and my GPU, more importantly, they're not all that much more powerful right now, but it did have some issues with that but otherwise if you are looking to become a youtuber or streamer whatever the case may be the rtx 2700 or the similar gpus are excellent places to start and they're still available on the market for a decent price right now and now finally for my current computer this is a custom computer that i built it has an i7 12700 kf processor it's an intel gtx 3070 ti it's got around 60 percent better performance than the RTX 2070, and GPUs with comparable performance are the AMD RX 6800 XT and the RTX 2080 Super. Now this features also 16 gigabytes of RAM that are DDR4, 3600 megahertz. Some people might say, hey, why didn't you get more RAM? I probably should have. I possibly could have even gotten an RTX 3080 for about the same price, but you know what? This is a very well-rounded computer. And to be honest with you guys, I play it in 2K, and I get excellent graphics with this computer. I'm getting somewhere around, uh, I think 200-ish frames per second, and this is at max settings. So I don't play on movie settings, but I'm pretty much maxed out on everything. 
except for the um, the FXAA, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm pretty much maxed out with everything, and even that, I'm still several settings into it. So it's an excellent computer to be able to play War Thunder, and it's something that, barring some sort of hardware disruption in the next few years, this will be reasonable to run War Thunder again for, for years to come, and will be something that you can record with. So you don't need something this crazy. Of course, I'm a YouTuber. I make money on YouTube, so this is part of what I use to make money. So it makes sense for me, but if you're looking for kind of a minimum-ish, War Thunder says, I believe it's the 1060 graphics card, should be around the recommended settings. I would say that's probably fairly accurate, but you're not going to get great graphics from it. You really start getting much better graphics around the 1650, 1660 Ti more so for the laptop. That's where you're really going to want to be. And at that point, you can start recording, you can start streaming, and it's a pretty reasonable experience. So my recommendation, get around the 1660-ish Ti, and you should be pretty good, if, especially if you want to start becoming a YouTuber. That's where you're going to want to be. You're going to always want at least 60 to 70 frames per second, and the reason why I say that is because if you can get 60 frames per second, if you drop anywhere below that, it starts becoming somewhat noticeable in a video. So if you're well above 60 frames per second, it's much much better because dropping below 60 frames per second is a big deal but anything above it is kind of bad so if you can kind of get yourself to a point where your graphics are above 60 frames per second you want to be a youtuber that is where you're going to want to be whether it's on medium graphics high graphics whatever the difference between medium and high graphics is much less than it is from low to medium so if you can get that medium graphics benchmark and maybe work around the graphics a little bit to prioritize certain settings like textures and still get above that 60 frames per second you will be golden, and I think that starts with a give or take around the 1660 Ti range. So that being said, Tankenstein signing out. Tell me what you guys think about this video. It's kind of a one-of-a-kind video. I've never made something like this before, nor do I really think I'm ever going to make something like it again. So let me know in the comments below. I'm interested to hear what your graphics cards are, what your CPUs are, if you've had any issues or any success with recording, streaming, whatever the case may be. So that said, please like, comment, subscribe. I always appreciate it. And either way, I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.